Hello, this is Christopher Kemedy and welcome to Camera Flythrough in After Effects. To get started we need to import the angel images and when you try and do that you'll get this dialog saying that the item has an unlabeled alpha channel. By default straight unmatted will be set so just leave that checked and click OK for each image and you'll see them appearing over here as you do that. If you double click on any of these to open it you can see that the background is black showing that the alpha channel is there so that whenever we arrange these together they have transparency behind them. We'll create our clip by going to composition, new composition and select a width of 1 to 80 and a height of 720 leave pixel aspect ratio on square and a frame rate of 25. Set the duration to about 10 seconds and then click OK. We can change that duration later if we need to. I'll drag the cloudy sky clip in here down in the timeline and you can see there that if I pull out that's a, an enormous photograph that's way bigger than the frame of our image which is what we want because we're going to be flying around and we need that to stay large in the background so a big high resolution image is what you want. However, we are going to need it to be 3D. So before we create a camera, let's just go down here and check the 3D box to make that a 3D layer. Now go to Layer, New Camera, and make sure you select a two-node camera under Type. You can leave the name as Camera 1, and a preset of 35mm is good. If you select a really long lens, like an 80mm or 135mm, you won't really feel the fly-through. And if you go too short with, say, a 20mm, it's very difficult because the background needs to be absolutely enormous. So 35mm is good for experimenting, and if you want to try something else later, go ahead. If Enable Depth of Field is checked, uncheck it because although depth of field looks great and we'll want it later on, right now it will just slow down your work. Click OK and your camera appears in the timeline. To create a fly through you really need to see how everything's arranged in 3D space. So go down to the view layout and change from one view to two views horizontal. We can't really see what's going on yet. We need to pull out and see this window on the left a bit more clearly. But if you look at these yellow triangles on this window, they show that this is the selected window. To select this window, just click in a grey area, not on the image itself, and you see the yellow triangles now show this is the active window. That means that when I come to magnification and change it to, say, 12, I get to see what's going on in this window. If I click on the camera, you can see... This little box down here is pointing out at this layer. It's a little difficult to see what's going on if you're not used to this, so I'll just zoom in and have a close look at the camera. The idea here is that this little box is our camera and these lines going out represent the field of view, what it's looking at. And what it's looking at is this layer here, which is our cloudy sky image. Just to illustrate that, I'm going to hit W, get the rotation tool, and just click on that layer and turn it around to show you that even when we're looking from the top, that layer is there in 3D space. So I'll just undo that, and you can get the idea that our camera is sitting down here, pointing at this layer, and over here on the right, that's what it's seeing. I'll just change this right-hand window to fit up to 100%, and you can see we're only really looking at a small part of that image, which if you look at this window you can see as well because the camera is only looking at this little fraction of the image and there's the whole image out to the left and the right. So to see the whole image I could move the camera back or I could move the image away from it. I'll just leave the camera where it is for now. I'm going to zoom out a little more, click on that image and I want to move it further away up here. There are several ways of doing this but right now I'm just going to click on it and drag it out into the distance and you can see that's reflected over on the right. Now one problem I'm having, as you'll probably notice, is that I'm wobbling around a little. It's going in all different directions. That's because I just grabbed on the image and moved it manually. It can be better to use the arrows. I'll show you how to do that. So I'll just undo. If we zoom in, you'll see this blue arrow here with Z or Z 
and that's the axis moving away from the camera. So you can zoom out again and when you hover over the correct arrow that little letter appears showing you which arrow you've selected. So if I move it up to the green arrow the Y appears, across to the red arrow the X appears. We want the Z axis because we're moving it away so I just hover it there, click and then when I push on the mouse even if I move the mouse left and right the image is not going to go anywhere other than backwards on that z-axis. So if you look over on the right I can now position that really accurately so that it's right up to the edge of the frame without wandering away. I'm going to do that one more time to show you how you can see this being reflected down in the timeline. If you untwirl the cloudy sky triangle here and look at the transform options you'll see the anchor point, position, scale, orientation, all these things show you where the image is in 3D space. So I'm going to hover over that Z arrow again, click on it, and as I do, you'll notice the position numbers changing. The number on the far right of position, which is just down here, goes up as I move that away. That's the Z axis. The great thing is that you can maneuver the clip by working with these numbers directly. So if I just hover over the number, click on it, and then drag to the right, you can see the image is moving away in z-space. Or I can drag to the left and it moves closer to me. This can be really useful when you're copying values or trying to make very small adjustments. It can be a little better than using the arrows themselves to maneuver a clip into place. Now although I've just shown you all the ways to be really accurate, at this point we don't need to be super accurate because things will change when we add in other elements. Right now all I really want to do is position this somewhere far in the background and then we'll drop the angels into place in front of it. Now before I begin dropping the angels in I'm going to give each one a different colour so that they're easier to see in the timeline. Next to each name there's this little box. If I just click on that and choose a colour from the drop down it means that we can really distinguish them that bit more easily when we're working it might seem like an unnecessary step but I've found that this really saves time later on when you're trying to work out which one you're looking at. So with those all set I'm now going to start dropping them into the timeline. So I drag Angel 1 down to the timeline and then click its 3D box. So we can see the angel there in front of the camera and you can see that on the left as well this red image is in front of our camera and the camera staring at it. So if we grab hold of this and move it around, it's moving around in space over there as well. Now one thing I'm noticing straight away before I do anything else is that even when I move this angel right back towards the cloudy sky, there's not that much distance between the camera and the sky. We're trying to create a fly-through where there's a really good sense of depth and we're not really getting that here. That angel isn't very far away. If I move it further back it disappears behind the sky. If you look on the right it's gone. So I'll bring it back in front of the sky image there. So what we need to do is create more depth, more distance between the camera and the background. Once again I'll just click on the sky and move it backwards, create a lot of depth. Now of course you can see over on the right now the sky isn't big enough but that's okay. We can scale it up. Just hit S and then drag on the scale numbers until it visually fills the frame on the right. Now I'm just going to grab this angel again by clicking here, move it backwards and look over on the right you can see that angel is now very distant which is what we want. We want to create this sense of flying through a deep scene. I might make it even a little more extreme than that so I'm going to click on the image of this cloudy sky and move it back even further and then just scale it up again until it's filling the frame on the right. Now if I click on this angel you can see that if I drag it right back it's looking very distant on the right and that means we're going to create a really strong sense of flying through lots of space. So I'll position this first angel just about here. I can see where it is. If you look on the right the same arrows are here. I can use them to maneuver the angel. I can click on the green arrow move it up and down, the red arrow it will go side to side and the blue arrow will move it towards the camera or away. 
We'll drop each angel in one at a time, bring in angel 2, make it 3D. And rather than being too precise in creating my composition to begin with, I'm just going to move each angel sort of out of the way of the camera where I can roughly see it in its own piece of sky. I'm not going to worry too much about getting a, a perfect composition at this point. So just repeat this for each one so we can see roughly what's going on and where each one is sitting. So with those four now in, I am going to bring in the rest all at once. So I'll click on Angel 5, shift click on Angel 9 and drag them all over to the timeline. Check the 3D boxes for all of them. Then I'll drag as a group, drag them out to the background. Then I'll just click off them and then in the timeline itself I'll select each one. And with it selected you can see there the coloured blue box for Angel 5. I'll just click on that frame and drag it out. Click on Angel 6, drag it out, and so on. And this is just a way of getting everything into After Effects so we can see roughly how it's going to look in that composition. And then we're ready to start arranging the frame itself for the fly-through.